columns, though, to um, some of these columns to be able to link to other tables. But very, very interesting over here. Okay, let's go a little bit further. There's quantities right over here. And see this little sum over here, which means calculated type column? So we've actually included this little sigma sign right over there. And then there's this little calculator, which means measure. The reason why this is significant is because this little, this little measure thing, as they call, allows for you to be able to do what's known as slicing as dicing, as we're going to see. So what happens over here is we can dynamically create filters or parameters um, just by doing checking and dragging and dropping rather than having to formally define them like we do within SSRS, as you'll see pretty soon. Okay, now this is really cool to get started with. So let's, let's start first by doing a standard thing that we've done already many, many times before. Set a title. We'll call this picnic, just like they do, items. There we go. Um, and then what we'll do over there is we'll select the text. Let's make it italic. Let's come down right over here and let's choose an actual font. And you see all these nice fonts, you name it. And let's go with this Sago Bold. Woo! Ah, there we go. Sago Bold right over there. Okay, now once you've actually got that down over there, the other thing you can do is watch this. You can also come down. And see these little regions right over here, just like this? Um, you can take this and you can adjust these. So let me just click off of it, come back, come back, move my little mouse, and look at that in the lower right. One thing that they probably will have to work on later on that's not there yet um, is making these, making these um, lines a lot clearer. You know, like this was very difficult to see. Um, here you can see it because I got the little yellow on the actual, you know, working on the little notepad or whatever, but you guys will see that. One, one issue is seeing borders. Um, they're very faint at the moment. Probably as they get better with the design, they'll make that a little better, my, my guess. So let me just come over here, bring that up, and make that a little bit smaller. So just making it a little bit smaller over there. So maybe, you know, like it was saying, half the width maybe. Top left corner, there. So putting it up just like this, um, that's fine there okay so there's picnic items right over there and you guys see over here interesting okay now that's nothing really new yet i mean that's nothing that we couldn't have seen you know that we couldn't have done in ssrs regularly or name it i mean where's the power view and the power type stuff that we've got okay let's see this next part now what you do now is you click on any white area and you see for the first time one of the things you have to think about is that now we've got something different called data regions okay now, in SSRS, handling regions and whatever was always a big pain in the tail. You know, um, there was no way to escape it. The more regions you added, the more and more work it took to do things like I was showing earlier, like list and you name it. And it was a cumbersome sort of process, or it is a cumbersome sort of process. And it, ha and it sort of has to be in order to really gain control over the entire layout. Not in PowerView. Let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to create our very first region over here. So what I'm going to do is first you click the blank view just like this, okay? Now watch this, how this automatic stuff basically works. I'm gonna come back right over there. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna find the items table. And I'm gonna start giving it some fields, right? Fields are the equivalent of columns for those of you brand new. So if you ever hear the word field, think column there. However you wanna say it, whatever fancy pantsy word you wanna use. Okay, for the field over there now, um, find the category field and just check it. It says drag it, but just check it. Left click to check it, that's how you do it. And look at that. It's rendering something right over here. Yeah, it's rendering, a, it's rendering a data region. Wow. It renders it right there. You can move this wherever you want to move it, and we will in just a moment. But look at that. Now we've actually got category over here, and we've got a data region. Okay, we're starting to rock now, right? So we've got category going first. Let's go a little bit further on over here. Come back, and now also check quantities right over there. Um, or, or find the quantities table and then and then watch out be very careful over here You want to drag the sum of the quantity served right over here So find the sum of the quantity served right over there and check it notice. It's a measure remember what I said later on um, Measures um, for right now for those of you brand new for those of you already experienced I know you know what a measure is but for those of you brand new I want you to understand that a measure is going to allow for you to be able to do dynamic parameters which are known as filters Okay, remember that. And when I say dynamic parameters, what I mean by over there is you can, what I mean is you can adjust options like, for example, only show me apples and show me the numbers for apples and, and it will automatically adjust these totals. So like, for example, if you wanted to have fruits and you drug in just say apple, then suddenly the fruits figure would go down to whatever, however many apples were sold. Say if it was just 400 apples out of the total amount. 
and that can happen dynamically by, by clicking as we'll see. All right, that's a dynamic parameter. All right, so now we've actually um, so now we've actually got fruits right over there. So we're starting to rock a little bit more. Ooh, this is starting to rock now. This is really starting to hit it. Okay, let's go a little bit further. Um, we've got this. We've got our sum of our quantity served right over there, right? Um, coming back over here. Now, next there's a visualizations. Okay, Visual, visualizations are how we want to actually define the data region to look. And look how it's even highlighted by default to tell us how do you want to define this? Do you want it to be a table like this? Or maybe you want something else. Okay, let's click a bar, bar chart. Typically, it's a good idea to have at least one table if it's a big enough report, because tables are still the clearest way to see things. But this is a bar chart over here. And look at this bar chart over here. Breads, bread, um, beverages, breads, fruits. We can move this little thing up and down just like this. And as you guys can guess, we're going to expand this data region a little bit later on. But now we actually have a bar chart too. Okay. We're starting to rock a little bit over here, but you know, one thing we want to do is be able to see all the bars in the chart. So what we can do is let's just adjust this a little bit. First thing I'm gonna do is wait until I get this little hand there. See that little hand? Now we got a hand. I'm gonna hold down on the left click and bring the hand over here like that, just so I get more space so I can actually see this. Now what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna move my little arrow and keep going until I get to this part where I get the two arrows like that in the right corner and I'm going to expand this a little bit. I want to be able to see everything, so I'm going to drag it down until I can see every single one of these particular um, categories. Breads, beverages, fruits, you name it. So I just want to be able to see it, because it's a good practice. You should be able to see all labels on a report, always. Remember that. Um, if you ever want to know how small should I make it, where's the cutoff? At the point to where you can see the title and you can see all labels. That's very, very important on a report usually. Um, so keep that in mind as a best practice. Okay, now we've actually got that down. So we got our visualization, we got our bar chart over here, right? Okay, this is very good. Now let's go a little bit further over here and see a few more things. So this is pretty cool. We're getting started right off the bat where you can see up to 5K for beverages, things like that, whatever else. Um, we're gonna select the bar chart over here. Then what we're gonna do over there is we're gonna go up to the Home tab and on the Home tab now, once we've actually got this, move over here and there's a copy. Now for SharePoint 2010, remember, um, you'll have your little copy too, but it might be a little bit harder to see um, slightly. So just kind of keep that in mind that there's a, some small differences in the rendering, but still mostly the same because you're using the Power View input. So I'm gonna click Copy. It gives you a warning, la, 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 la. Yeah, access your clipboard, of course, yes. Just like that. And then what you want to do next is just click somewhere in the white space, come up again to home, and you guys will see over here that, that you guys have got, whoops, 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 sorry about that. I said click in the white space, not in the white space, sorry about that. You guys will see over here that, you, that you've got an option over here, paste. And I did mean white space, sorry. There. Hit the little paste just like that, so clicked in the white space, sorry guys, I lost my place, um, and click paste right over there. And now there's our little paste right over here. So we paste it again. Wait, why do we paste the same thing? Because maybe we're gonna change a couple things inside of this second one that we're gonna have. So now we've got a second chart. And let me just move the second chart down a little bit. Give me more space to work with for now. There's my second chart over here. Okay, so there's our copy of our chart. Okay, now what can we actually do that's gonna be a little bit different over here? All right, first thing we're gonna do over here is there's this category, there are these boxes over here that I'm gonna be explaining as we begin to go by, tile by values. Now first, leave tile by alone. We'll get there later, promise. Legend, as you guys can guess, is exactly, you know, is exactly how we're gonna go about um, describing the data, right? That little legend that basically, that basically shows like any other chart. We've already covered that in, in Report Builder, same concept. Vertical mul uh, multiples and horizontal multiples, I'm gonna be showing you a little bit later inside this tutorial, so hang on over there, along with tile by. But for here right now, I want you guys to see axes. And you guys will notice that for axes right over here, you've got category. So it's telling us right over there that for our axes, our Y axes, you guys can see, there's category over here. And what we're saying over here is, no, you know what? Um, axes for category, so it's showing category beverages, breads, fruits, um, vegetables. That's not really what we want over here. So instead, I'm gonna click on this category over here, and I'm gonna click on, left click on remove field. Okay, now it's got nothing except for just the data, right? <laughs> the quantity served for the values over there. Um, wouldn't it be nice to have something though on the y-axis that we want to see? Sure. 
Um, and in fact, what we're going to do is we're going to bring distributors down. Now we're starting to rock a little bit. Let me just move this down a little bit. So let me readjust it, go into the corner, bring it down. Move it a little bit more, make it a little bit bigger for now. I'll make it bigger later on. And look at that. Now we've got all these. Now we can see the distributors. And this is starting to look a little bit better now. Let me move this up. And you guys see in the middle, there's this little, you guys see that little dark type little part that appears as you hover over it. Move that up just a little bit. Give us just a little bit more space there. And then I'm going to come down on the bottom and I'm going to move it down a little bit. There. And that's really spaced out just so we can see it. Mainly for our dem mainly for our demo, and then I'm gonna take the little hand sign and move it over here for now, just so everyone can see it. I'm trying to make sure that it's clear on the actual video. That's my concern. Let me move this up a little bit more here. Move the first one up, and then let me come up and move this one up a little bit more too, to make sure it's there. So we got this little we got this little hand thing, and you guys will notice that as you begin to move it around, sometimes you have to click in a little bit. There, there's our little hand sign, and move that up just like that. There, okay. There we go. So now we've actually got distributors, and we can see. Okay, so these, so, so this is the total amount of quantity. Um, this is the total quantity served, right, over here for every single one of the distributors. Healthy Active Store did did almost 3,500. Okay, we've got that. And when you move your mouse over, you can even see. Oh, look at that. There's the pop-up actually showing it. Now, one of the reasons why Microsoft utilizes these pop-ups is because they wanted these to be available on mobile devices. This is really big for mobile reporting on things like iPads and iPhones and, and Windows phones and, and tablets, you name it. So that's why you see all these pop-ups now like this. Pretty cool, definitely. Okay, let's go a little bit further here. So now we've actually got our visualizations going on, right? And, um, or, or we've actually got this bar chart. Let's change this in one more way. Click on this, make sure that you're inside of this particular chart right over here. Then come up for me and, and you guys will see we're in, we're in home. Go down to design right over here. And let's go ahead and change this from a bar chart, which as you guys can see over there, we had a bar earlier, to a column chart. Ah, look at that. Now we've actually got a column chart right over here. Big column chart, but it's a column chart. So you guys can see over here, there's our column chart right over there actually showing the total quantity right there. Okay, now that is very, very beneficial. Okay, now this is helpful, but it needs more. Let's say that, we, let's say that our users say, come back to us and our users say, you know what, this was good, but this is what I need to see. I need to not only be able to see quantity served, but maybe what I want to also be able to do is see the quantity consumed. Oh, okay, okay, very, very interesting. So you want to go ahead and you want to see the quantity consumed also. All right, not a problem. Watch this. We come back over here, and what we want to do is instead of using quantity consumed, QTY consumed over there, use the sum of quantity consumed too. That way, that way it'll respect all of our filters. Oh, and look at this right over here just for a moment. Here's our quantity consumed and look what happens over here. 